All right, Mark Demansky again. I've got uh, Dr. Richland here. We're doing uh, some mock orals. And uh, remember, in the real oral board setting, they give you absolutely no feedback. It's super awkward. Uh, they may not hear you completely. So if they ask, huh, you may be on the right thing. Maybe they just didn't hear you. And it is actually pretty hard to evaluate people um, virtually. Just keep that in mind. And, and they're maybe as uncomfortable with this as you are. OK. So here we've got a healthy 20-year-old um, uh, male who is working, gets their hand uh, uh, caught in some type of rotary device at work, prevent, presents to the uh, emergency room, and you're asked to consult. Doctor, mm -hmm. what do you see? Um, so I see a right uh, thumb injury distal to the interphalangeal joint. Um, it doesn't appear that it's completely amputated, um, but it looks like the cut is almost circumferentially. I can't see the volar picture. Um, the distal tip does appear a little dark or dusky, but it's difficult to tell without cleaning off the, the tip. Um, on the x-ray, I see a, uh, uh, looks like there's at least one fracture fragment. Um, it's hard to tell if there's more, but I see one fracture fragment that's uh, completely fractured of the uh, distal phalanx of the thumb at the base. Gotcha. Okay, uh, what's your, the patient uh, is just not very good tolerance to pain. That's really the exam you get. You can't get mm -hmm. anything more. It hurts mm -hmm. him to move uh, and so forth. He's anxious. Mm -hmm. And so what would you, what would you tell him? Mm -hmm. What would you like to do? Yeah, so, I'd, so um, my concern would obviously be for the vascular supply of the tip. Um, so I'd want to test sensation of the distal tip, and then I also want to uh, do a, a vascular examination, check capillary refill, check for bleeding, pinprick, and you could potentially put a pulse ox on as well. Gotcha. He's just really hard with the pain. He's he's one of these delicate flowers. Mm -hmm. um, you really I, want I would, more information out of that. What would you like to um, do? So I, I would do a, a thumb block, and then um, I could better assess the vascular supply of the thumb tip. Uh, it's poor. Okay. Uh, so I discussed with the patient um, essentially two options. Um, the first option would be a revascularization, which would be either repairing one or both of the arteries and also the nerves. I would also discuss with him um, uh, doing a revision amputation of the distal thumb tip. So the important points would be uh, you know, the patient handedness, occupation, and prior level of functioning. This guy doesn't, you know, he, he uh, his employer doesn't really have great workman's comp or doesn't at all. Mm -hmm. uh, the guy's like, listen, I just need to get back to work as quick as possible. That's my preference. In such a scenario, what would be your, um, if, his, if his primary goal is getting back to work as quick as possible, he's got mm -hmm. kids he's got to support, he's working two jobs. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. What's your, what would be your, what would you edge how would you educate and counsel him then yeah so so generally I, I generally i do try and replant thumbs or revascularize thumbs but if his biggest um concern is getting back to work as fast as possible i'd let him know that um, the best option would be a revision amputation that would allow him to uh, get back to work faster it would allow him to recover faster um, he would still have um, decent use of that thumb, especially for manual labor, um, because there is still, um, it's, it's distal to the interphalangeal joint. Um, you know, can, yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's not, you, know, <laughs> you get to the OR and, and this is what you find. What's your approach? Mm -hmm. uh, so it looks like the only uh, uh, structure still attached is, it looks like that's the flexor tendon of the, the FDP of the thumb there. So um, I would start out by, uh, obviously I, I do this under general anesthesia. I'd also do it with a hand tourniquet. Um, I would start out by cleaning and prepping uh, both sides of the wound. So the distal amputated part and the uh, proximal segment. Uh, I would start by tagging structures, um, the nerves and the uh, artery. What's, what structure do you need to find? Um, so, well, the art, I mean, the arteries. Thank you. Good. And they may just do that. They did that yeah. to me on the board. I was like, well, I will, I'll look at all of it. They're like, artery. Yeah. Thank you. Let's keep going. Um, you just can't find any distal arteries. The zone of injury is too extensive. You, um, you don't have any uh, flow. 
out of uh, the proximal arteries. Uh, the distal arteries are just not, not there due to the, the degree of injury. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's no distal artery attachment, then uh, even a, a vein graft wouldn't just, work. So, yeah. so that's when you may have to do the revision amputation. Obviously beforehand you discussed that even if you're trying for uh, revascularization that there's an option that you may have to perform a revision amputation. Yeah, fair enough, yeah. So I'm basically telling you, you you've tried, you can't, re, mm -hmm. you can't uh, replant it and, and, and I'm just telling you, what would you do? And you're like, okay, I got to proceed with a revision amp. It, interestingly, in real life, patients under, patients are um, less like, are most likely to sue if they show up at the ER thinking they're going to get it re, replanted and you're like, I can't do it. Whereas yeah. if you go to the OR and it fails, I mean, yeah. there's really not much, I mean, the patient's like, thank you, you tried. And then the jury is going to understand like, well, it was cut off. Obviously, sometimes it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. you know, that's, that's a relatively low liability event unless the patient is 85, just had a heart attack and a really bad surgical candidate, and now they had a stroke. Yeah, that's yeah. different. Okay, fair enough. So you go ahead and you do your revision amp, but um, you know, doctor, it's very difficult for you to to um, to get closure. There's exposed bone. What what are your what's your approach? Um, so, uh, I guess I would I would try and shorten the uh, distal phalanx there. I saw that there was a little fragment of the distal phalanx, so I'd probably start by removing that and then see if I could get the skin flaps uh, to close over that. You're just having a hard time doing getting good closure. Without doing, without really, uh, you need to run sure a lot of the bone back. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm asking you imagine a finger <laughs> that the thumb is gone, it's this yeah. open thing, you've got exposed bone, and you really don't want to run sure. Uh, yeah, so, if, so yeah, so if you want to preserve length, then you could use uh, potentially a Moberg flap to uh, help uh, cover that distal surface. Gotcha. Uh, and they would ask you, can you draw your incision for the Moberg flap? Yeah, let's see if I can annotate here. So I'd go uh, through here. And then it'd be up through down here. Perfect. Great. You know, <laughs> excellent. Yeah, <laughs> it's, proof, it's proof of concept. The guy has a general idea. The doctor has a general idea what this is. It's fine. It's bored. It's magic. Okay, do a Moberg flap. Okay, great. It works out, um, and then it, it it looks fantastic. Of course, it's the board, so they're never completely happy, and there's always complications and issues. And the guy says, mm -hmm. "Doctor, I, I can I can do everything I need, but I just can't I can't use this thing at work that if I I just can't grab around it well enough. I just I just I just can't get enough mm -hmm. my hand around it. Is there something you could do for this problem? Mm -hmm. My thumb just isn't long enough." Yeah. So. Um... Uh, for this, he, ha he has decent length, so um, what I would recommend would be a web space deepening um, of, the, of the first web space there. That would give him a little more length of the thumb. That how would, would be you, my initial. How would you perform that? What type of procedure would you do to accomplish that web space deepening? Uh, so that would be a Z-plasty. Thank you. Easy. Keyword word there. <laughs> and they, they, be able, they may have something on the checklist like Z-plasty, and they're like, come on, say it, say it, say it. And then in the real boards, they'll have a picture of the hand. Mm -hmm. It's going to be hard for them to do it virtually. And they say, please draw out, you know, mm -hmm. your, your flaps and all that. And, you know, <laughs> uh, or maybe not, because you only have six minutes. It's really tough. I yeah. felt very rushed the entire time. And I felt like I was failing. And I didn't. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> right, let's keep going. Okay. 